Did you know that some of today's biggest dramas were rejected at first? If it wasn't for some pushing and begging, your favorite show wouldn't have made it onto your screen. Shockingly, Descendants of the Sun is one of those shows that was passed around between networks before it finally got to air. This drama, starring Song Hye Kyo and Song Jung Ki, became a massive hit for the amazing chemistry the two actors shared. SBS was supposed to air the series, but decided to cancel at the last minute due to production issues. It seems like the reason behind the initial rejection had everything Thing to do with creative differences between the writer and the production team. SBS started to get cold feet once they realized the main themes of the drama would be war and disaster. They started to doubt whether a series with those themes would become a commercial success, despite it being written by hitmaker Kim Unsook. What made the network even more doubtful was the fact that the main character played by Jung Ki is a soldier. Now you might wonder why that would be an issue, well, it turns out SBS would have had a harder time showcasing their sponsors. As a soldier, Jung Ki would mostly wear uniforms throughout the show, making it harder for the network to earn profit from wardrobe sponsorships. The last reason they decided to reject the drama was that 70% of the series would have to be shot overseas. This would cost a lot of money, which made the network even more hesitant to accept it. Eventually, KBS risked it all and accepted the script, and that was a great decision on their part. The drama took Asia by storm and won many awards over the years, proving it was a great success. In a very similar way, the 2016 drama Signal was rejected by SBS as well. Although the the script was written by Kim Eun-hee, whom the network had worked with on three other popular series. They didn't think the concept for Signal would become a hit. The broadcasting giant declined the offer for the show because they thought the genre would bring in low ratings. Low ratings in turn would diminish their advertisement profits, so they didn't have much faith. Another issue was the idea for the show, as they believed this specific crime series would be a little too complicated. The plot is time transcending and full of fantasy, which SBS thought wouldn't be good enough to bring in a big audience. The broadcaster also believed the premise of the show to be a little too grim, meaning it wouldn't attract any sponsors or other investors. The script was passed on to TVN, who did see some potential in the show. Rejecting Signal was yet another mistake SBS made, since the drama became one of the most iconic crime K-dramas. It brought in a huge amount of viewers and won several awards, so Unhee's script definitely had enough potential. Next up is Strong Woman Do Bong Soon, which was also rejected, but surprisingly not by SBS this time. The script the script of this drama was originally sent to TVN, which isn't strange at all if you think about it. You might have noticed that this broadcasting network has the tendency to air fantasy rom-coms, so the writer of Strong Woman Do Bong soon believed to have a good chance at getting the green light. Unfortunately, the script received a big no from TVN, so the creator of the show had to find a new network to pitch to. It's not clear why TVN rejected the drama, as they didn't really give any reason. Luckily, JTBC was more than eager to pick the script up, still giving the drama the chance to become a big hit. The series became extremely popular across the entirety of Asia, so TVN just really missed out. You might not believe it, but the script for My Golden Life was also turned down at first. This show is especially popular among family drama lovers, and it's become such a household name that it's hard to imagine it was ever turned down. Initially, screenwriter So Hyun Kyung was planning to collaborate on a miniseries with SBS. However, this idea was scrapped when the network feared a miniseries war between the three big stations. Although the concept for My Golden Life was pitched to SBS, first. KBS was the channel that actually went through with it. In the end, KBS got to enjoy ratings over 40%, which any network would be dreaming of. The fact that even Squid Game got rejected is absolutely mind-blowing. The minute the series dropped, it became an international sensation, bringing millions into the industry. It took the creator of Squid Game literally 10 years to get the show to be produced. Huang Dong-hyuk, the man behind it all, had a very tough time when it came to pitching his show to networks. This had everything to do with the fact that these platforms believed believed his idea to be too complicated and simply unachievable. It's said that Dong Hyuk came up with the concept of the show more than a decade ago. At this point in time, he was still living at home with his mother and grandmother. He wasn't doing well financially, to the point he even had to sell the laptop he was writing on to make a little bit of money. This put his writing process, which started around 2009, to a halt for a while. Dong Hyuk was greatly inspired by Japanese comics that had survival at the forefront. During the days he was pretty much broke, he'd spend his time reading these comics in an attempt to figure out how he would survive in those dangerous worlds. Eventually, he found out that writing a project about these survival games might turn out a bit complex, so he switched to writing about dangerous children's games. Although Dong Hyuk had simplified the concept of the project a lot, investors still didn't think it would be a success. Commenting on this, he said, Investors thought it was a little too complex and not commercial. I wasn't able to get enough investment and casting was difficult. After a very long time, the concept was finally picked up by Netflix. Initially, 
Originally, Squid Game was supposed to be a feature film, but it ended up becoming a series, and well, that was pretty difficult. Dong Hyuk shared, I had to make a two-hour film into an eight-hour series, and new characters that didn't exist in the two-hour version were added, and of course, that was a very tough process. It's said that it took him around six months to write just the first two episodes of the series. Dong Hyuk's biggest motivation was to bring a fatal game of red light, green light to our screens. He was fascinated by the thought of how it would strike viewers to see something like that. When it finally came to life, he couldn't have been happier with the outcome. In an interview, he explained that seeing the final product made him feel an overwhelming amount of emotions, as it took him over a decade to get there. Now that Squid Game is ranked as Netflix's most watched series, it's hard to imagine that the series was ever rejected in the first place. Another extremely popular show that wasn't greenlit immediately is Extraordinary Attorney Wu. The networks that declined this series are probably in deep regret now, since Attorney Wu's story gained an extreme amount of attention all over the world. Not only did it do great on Netflix, it also broke some cable television records. It turns out that the drama was originally set to be produced by SBS, but the network rejected the show last minute. The reason for this is very vague, as the network never revealed why it passed on the show to ENA. Surprisingly enough, netizens were relieved to find out the drama was rejected by SBS. They believed that if SBS had picked up production, they would have filled the show with advertisements. Another person pointed out that SBS was planning to cast a child actor for the role of Young Woo. How true that is, is up for debate, but it's safe to say not a lot of people would have liked that. Speaking of the casting, there were many issues with that too. Pak Eun Bin herself initially rejected playing the lead role. She revealed that she got the offer around the same time she received her part in The King's Affection. Before she got to play the role of Young Young Woo, a lot went down. Unbin revealed she rejected the proposal multiple times because she didn't believe she'd do a good job at representing someone on the autism spectrum. Despite her doubts, she eventually accepted the role, and it's safe to say everyone's glad she did. We can probably all agree that Mr. Sunshine is a masterpiece, so who would have thought that it was initially rejected as well? There seems to be a pattern here, since the network that rejected the offer was once again SBS. This one in a million drama was also penned by Unsook, which already gave away that it had the potential to become a huge huge hit. This time around, the broadcaster didn't have many complaints about the plot. Instead, the issue was the funding. SBS simply couldn't afford to risk spending so much money on the production only for the drama to potentially fail. TVN eventually became home to the drama, and it did anything but fail. To this day, Mr. Sunshine is one of the highest rated shows in cable network history. Last up is Woman of Dignity, which is yet another drama you probably didn't expect to see on this list. This particular script was turned down by SBS because the series included lots of steamy scenes. Let's just say that SBS is one of the more family-friendly channels, so this particular drama didn't really fit in. There were some troubles in finding the right network, but in the end, JTBC picked up this show. It was a big win for JTBC since they had yet another blockbuster on their hands, and the audience was thankful for it being released. Which one of these shocked you the most, and do you know about any other cases? Let us know down below, and thanks for watching. Bye!